So you're thinking about moving to Bellingham, Washington, but you're concerned about high interest rates. Well, in this video, I connect with the local lender to explain and explore the correlation between inflation and interest rates, as well as to provide some hope and some context surrounding this particular subject. And we're gonna get started right now. <music> Hey, if this is your first time on the channel, we encourage you to like, subscribe, and hit the bell for notifications so you can keep up on all the great content that we're releasing about Bellingham, about Whatcom County, and all the things that are going on here in this area. My name is Jeff Engen. I'm with MJB Real Estate Group here in Bellingham, and every day we get calls, texts, and emails from people just like you who are considering a move to this area, and we absolutely love it. So whether you're thinking about moving tomorrow, 10 months from now, or sometime in between, all of our contact information can be found below and we are standing by and ready to help in any way that we can. But for now, let's jump into this conversation on interest rates and inflation. I am so excited to be here with Sarah Elkington from Caliber Home Loans in Bellingham. And uh, Sarah had recently done a presentation for a group of agents here in Whatcom County um, talking about rates, talking about inflation and the correlation between the two and providing what I thought was some really um, super helpful, super beneficial and also um, encouraging information with regards to where we are, what rates are doing and what we anticipate moving forward. And so I've invited Sarah here today uh, to share very similar information because I think that it is um, something that a lot of people will get value out of. And of course, when, when Sarah shares this info with us, we as agents in turn take this out and share it with our clients. But sometimes it's even better to kind of cut out that middle person uh, in the conversation and just go straight to our source. So that's what we're doing here today. So Sarah, thank you so much for being here. Yeah, thanks for having me. Yeah. So, um, you know, I guess first and foremost, just sharing a little bit about you and your time um, in this industry. How long have you been uh, a lender? Um, what are, are some of your favorite things about working in this space? Uh, just anything that, that you would want to share before we kind of dive into the, the uh, subject matter that we're hoping to cover today. Okay, sure. Yeah, I'm Sarah. I'm with Caliber Home Loans, as Jeff mentioned. Um, I've been with Caliber for almost seven years now. Before that, I was in real estate for about two and I studied finance and economics in school. And I think that's probably what I like most about this industry is really tracking how different things impact our pricing. And that's why I liked putting this presentation together so much, um, but also just using that education to empower people to buy and help make them make better decisions financially for themselves and their family. Yeah, and I would say from personal experience working with Sarah, uh, with mutual clients a number of times, if you're considering uh, a purchase of a home here in Bellingham and you do not have a lender, I would strongly encourage that you get in contact with Sarah, make sure that her contact information is available um, in conjunction with this video. But um, Sarah's awesome. She's excellent at her job. She's great at explaining things, hence the, the reason for the call today. And um, just does a really thorough job in taking someone from that kind of pre-application uh, status all the way through to the closing uh, of their purchase of their home. So um, again, super excited to have you here. I would say go ahead and dive in uh, whenever you are ready. Okay. Thanks for those nice words, Jeff. Yeah. Okay. Let me just share my screen here. Okay. So this is the state of the market presentation that we've gone through before, Jeff. Um, these are really a uh, condensed version of some of the things we look at from the lender's perspective, things that can help us educate you and of course our clients, and just some information that I think is not shared as frequently as it should be. Um, so yeah, this is my take on the state of the market and what we can see going forward. So right now, inflation is about 7.75%, the highest it's been in 40 years. Interest rates right now are in the mid to high sixes. Um, there's a lot of fear of recession. Buyers are feeling too priced out. Homes are sitting on the market for a lot longer. So sellers are having a harder time selling their home um, and they're having to drop their prices as well. So I think from kind of a bird's eye view, maybe it doesn't look like such a great market. Um, but I think that there is a lot of good things coming on the horizon. So that's what I wanted to dive into with you here today. So before we talk about where we're going, 
I think it's important to understand how we got here. And the, the main issue we're having and really something that's in every news article you open is inflation. And what happened during COVID is we had a lot of supply chain issues, right? A lot of people were out of work. Um, a lot of businesses shut down. We couldn't get things from overseas. At the same time, the government was giving out stimulus checks and PPE loans and unemployment. I think we all knew somebody who was maybe making more on unemployment than they were <laughs> at their working jobs. A lot, lot of people, yep. Yeah, a lot of people. Maybe some people getting unemployment and working, you know? So now all of a sudden we've got cash being pushed into the market that wasn't there to begin with and not enough uh, goods. So that is what led to inflation. That's just kind of in the general sense. When we boil it down to uh, real estate and mortgage, the Federal Reserve was spending trillions of dollars on buying mortgage-backed securities, which are bonds, to keep mortgage rates artificially low. Um, so our interest rates are not determined by the federal funds rate, which I think is a pretty big misconception. When those rates are rising, the federal funds rate, a lot of people are, will call me and be like, I want to lock in my rate before you know, they raise their rate. But our rates are determined by the investors, the return that investors demand on mortgage-backed securities, which are bonds. And they're sold in a, in a private form, not publicly sold like stocks. Like you can't just go buy a piece of a mortgage-backed security. But yes, the, the demand that investors, the return that investors are demanding on those mortgage-backed securities is what really impacts our rates. So the Fed was keeping, buying a bunch of those to keep our rates low. Does that make sense? Does make sense. And so, you know, any, I guess, any insight from you in terms of, um, obviously that was good for a period of time. It helped to stimulate the economy, particularly the housing market during COVID, um, particularly yeah. in the early stages of COVID when a lot was unknown and there was a lot of uncertainty. Um, how do you feel like that impacted things and, and if it all contributed to where rates are today mm. based on kind of how we spent that time with those super low rates down in like even the twos? Yeah, um, I think they did way too much of that. Th the reason them buying so many or so much mortgage backed securities impacted our rates is because our rates are really a function of supply and demand. So the more people that are investing in mortgage backed securities, the lower those rates are, which was great for that short period of time. Um, I've got a slide on it a little bit later on about where it kind of goes wrong. Yeah. So we'll dive into that a little bit more then. But long story short is was probably a fine idea for a little bit of time, but needed to have stopped like a year before it stopped. Right. Uh, inflation and rates intersect. So when inflation goes up, uh, mortgage rates go up. We can kind of see this trend. Well, we can very clearly see this trend through history. And um, some of this we, we touched on a little bit just a moment ago, but what is essentially happening is when inflation is increasing, let's say inflation is 8% and I'm an investor and I can purchase a mortgage backed security and get 6%. I'm not going to do that because I've got 8% of my money going towards inflation and I'm only going to return 6% on this mortgage backed security. So what we have to do is then drive our mortgage rates up to drive that yield back to the investors up. So we'll see as inflation goes up, mortgage rates goes up as well to, to be able to give that yield back to the investors. Otherwise, they won't invest in them at all. Right. So right now, the Fed has been raising their uh, federal funds rate. That's one of the main tools that they have to fight inflation. If they increase their federal funds rate, which is the rate at which banks borrow from one another, then banks if they have to spend more to borrow from one another, um, they raise their rates through like credit cards, things like that, that are passed on to consumers and uh, consumers want to buy less. So that's the goal. That's why the federal fund, or that's why the Fed Reserve is raising their rate is to just discourage people from spending so much money. So that's what they've been doing really starting aggressively in June. Um, but what's been happening until just last Thursday, which we'll circle back to, is that the Fed was raising their rate and inflation wasn't coming down. 
So the market didn't like that at all. And when I say the market, I'm meaning people that are investing in those mortgage-backed securities. So the Fed is raising the rate, raising the rate, raising the rate, but inflation isn't changing. And that, uh, that doesn't look great for investors. So this is um, comparing the 30-year fixed mortgage rate and a 12-month lagging CPI inflation rate, so consumer price index that, that tracks um, consumer spending from 1971 until 2021. You can see as a general trend that when inflation starts to go up, mortgage rates follow. When inflation comes back down, uh, mortgage rates start to come back down, except for here in 2008, which we all remember. <laughs> and right now, so right now we've got the opposite of what's happening, what happened in 2008. Um, we've got inflation skyrocketing and mortgage rates staying the same. Now, this looks like it ends in December of um, 2021. So if we just take this last little bit of this graph and kind of blow it up, this is a slightly different version than what I showed you last time, Jeff. This is an updated version. Yeah. Yeah. So this is just that little end bit starting from January 2018 until July of 2022. I guess um, it's probably technically more like October of 2022 because we've got a little extra room there. Yep. So again, you can kind of see the, you know, the lines match, match each other. One goes up a little bit, so does the other. Except for starting in March of 2020, which is when COVID hit. You see this bracket here with QE period. That's for the quantitative easing that was done by the Federal Reserve. And that easing is uh, when they were spending trillions of dollars buying those mortgage-backed securities. So what we see here is no tracking at all. So inflation, the orange line, starts to shoot up in January of 2021. Mortgage rates are just chilling, you know, they're staying at... 2.9%, 3.2. They're not following inflation like they always should. And then in um, September of 2021, the Fed stops buying. So that period ends and we see interest rates shoot up. So now interest rates are trying to catch up to inflation instead of starting to rise a year before like they should have been. We really should have been easing into these increased rates much sooner. And maybe if the rates had gone up sooner, we wouldn't see inflation as so bad. Um, can't say for sure. But that's why I think, Jeff, that it probably wasn't great how long the Fed spent buying those mortgage-backed securities. It was just too much. Right. The, the Fed, they kind of, they don't really they don't seem to really look into the future. They make a move and then they're expecting to see almost an immediate turnaround. And we're still seeing a lot of that volatility with some Fed members wanting to continue to increase the federal funds rate because inflation isn't coming down enough. Um, but what we'll get into is that there's a, there's a several month lag period from the time where the Fed will increase their federal funds rate to where we see that actually start to impact uh, inflation. And here, I think they were just wanting to keep those mortgage rates low to stimulate the economy. But if they had done that for a shorter time period, the economy still would have been stimulated, but it wouldn't have been so falsely protected where rates were super low for two years almost. Right. Um, and then we see us trying to play a really big game of catch up right now. Totally. And so if we fast forward to like that, so whatever, you know, July of 22, and then of course the graph is going a bit beyond that, but we're then seeing that mortgage rate get back above the CPI. Yes. So I almost slid past that and I just put this new one in today. So thanks for reminding me. So yes. So on last Thursday, we got our new um, CPI report and that was the first time where we saw inflation drop. In, in quite a while and inflation dropped and immediately after that we saw mortgage rates improve so now we're seeing them start to come back down together and this is just such a clear image that inflation really does drive more mortgage rates and as we're starting to see our inflation come down i think we'll start to see our mortgage rates come back down too 
And so no crystal balls, but as you just said, like some of the members of the Fed are continuing to hold a very conservative stance on this and want to continue to see like basis point increases until things decrease from an inflationary perspective more dramatically. But what the graph is indicating and, and that information that came out here just recently was that in fact, inflation had been uh, improved and rates, I mean, o over the course of even just that day, that that report came out, things dropped pretty significantly, right? Yeah, we saw rates improve like a quarter to half a percent. Yeah, which is a huge change in a single day. I mean, that's massive. Right. Um. So yeah, I think I think we're probably going to see rates in the mid fives again in twenty twenty two. Yeah, is my hope, which is great because that's really where they were before COVID. You know, I bought a house in twenty eighteen and my rate was five and a quarter and it was wonderful. Yeah. Um, so I think rates of 2.9% are kind of a thing of the past. And I think as a, as a side note, that's important for people to understand, if we look at rates going back to like, you really have to go back all the way to like 2020 for rates were back like in, in the eights at that point in time. And then they spent a pretty long period of time floating between kind of that three to five some odd percent. Um, and so I think that perspective from, from a consumer standpoint, from a buyer standpoint is that like a rate in the fives would not really be that good of a rate. Now that's of course comparative to just looking at the relatively uh, recent past with rates going down into the twos. But from a historical perspective, even going back over the last 20 years, like a rate in the fives would be considered a relatively reasonable, relatively oh yeah, agreeable rate, right? Yeah, definitely. That's that's kind of what I touch on into this in this next slide. And that's a um, nice little smooth transition, Jeff. Uh, you see like in the 70s and 80s, rates were 12 to 18 percent, late 87, early 2000, seven to eight and a half percent. And then just recently, did they drop down to those um, ridiculously low levels? This is this was put together, I think, in January. And it's a slide I've saved for almost a year because I think it does such a good job of showing the relationship between inflation rates uh, how the Federal Reserve responds and inflationary rates again. So, I mean, in all of these years, through all of these different Fed chairs, we're seeing inflation start at a lower level and then during their time increase to a higher level. And we're seeing rates, uh, mortgage rates follow that. So mortgage rates are increasing with Burns and Volcker from uh, 12 to 18%. And then what they do is they increase the federal funds rate from 11% to 20%. And then we see inflation come down from 14% to 5%. And we see mortgage rates drop from 18% back down to 12% recession. Same thing with grain span. Inflation started at 1.75 and increased to three and a half. We see mortgage rates go up. The Fed raises their federal funds rate. We see inflation go back down. Mortgage rates come down, recession. Fast forward to today, inflation's going up. Uh, again, the slides from January. So, so mortgage rates, 2.5 to 3.375. Now we could say a 6.675, you know. And federal funds rate, um, which is now at 3.75 to 4. There's a lower and upper end there. And inflation should drop, which we just saw for the first time happening on Thursday. Right. Um, mm -hmm. And we saw mortgage rate response, thought they were declining as well. And we are headed towards recession. Yeah. Now, a side note on that, November 22nd, 2022 is the day we're recording this video. We presently are not officially in a recession, correct? Correct. Yeah. But that that is the that that's what we're all anticipating because the metrics that would indicate a recession are there. indicating a recession. Yeah. And for the first time, um, for the first time, well, for the second time in history, but just recently, the 30-year treasury and the one-month treasury inverted, which is the longest treasury and the shortest treasury. And what that means is right now, a one-month treasury is yielding more than a 30-year, which is opposite because you put your money way longer, you should get more back. Right. And that's like a huge indicator that a recession is coming. But whoever, I don't know who has this job, but whoever gets to say we're in a recession has not quite said it yet. Not officially said it yet. Not yet, but it's, it's uh, imminent. Yeah. 
And if you turn the TV on or you go on the internet and you go to your favorite news channel, whether that's Fox or CNN or elsewhere, that is a lot of what's being talked about right now. Yeah. So we're at the turning point with inflation as we kind of been discussing. Um, one of the, there's several different measures of inflation, but the core consumer price index CPI is really the main one that we're looking at. And all of these different numbers, 0 0.8, 0 0.3, 0 0.2, et cetera, combined together to make the year over year inflation rating. Um, this is 6.3. And how this works is inflation is looked at um, on a 12 month moving average, essentially. So if we look at July, August, and September of 2021, inflation was very low. And when we got our August and September numbers for August, sorry, for 2022, August and September, uh, they're much higher than the August and September inflation numbers from 2021. So the low numbers are taken out and they're being replaced by the higher inflation numbers and that's increasing inflation. You with me? Yep. So October of 2021, so a year ago, we had a, the first really high inflation reading since that June. Now, this October, we had a low inflation reading. So that report, the inflation readings for October comes out in November, it always lags by a month. Right. So that report we just got last Thursday was showing this new 12-month average, which is taking November of 2021 through October of 2022. So it's replacing that higher 0 0.6 with a lower 0 0.3 and resulting in um, a lower inflation reading overall. And that's when we saw that awesome response with mortgage rates. Yeah. So just kind of a little breakdown of, of how we're tracking inflation. And that's why when the Fed does something, it, it takes time for their actions to actually do something with inflation because it's on a 12 month period uh, rolling average. And it's, it just takes time for people to respond to those changes and in, in rates. So this is the 10 year uh, minus the two year treasury yield, similar to what we were just chatting about with the 30 year compared to the minus the one month and the vertical gray bars on here are recessions. So the red indicates um, an inversion of the yields and immediately after, or even during, we see the gray vertical line, which means recession. So inversion, recession, inversion, recession, inversion, recession, da, 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 da. little inversion, little recession. And right now we're here, we're inverted again. So this is just another indicator that a recession's coming. Yeah. The, well, depends on how you look at it. I was gonna say the good news is that housing stays strong during recession. So this is looking at from the 60s through 2021. Um, again, vertical bars indicate recession and the white graph depicts the, <clears throat> the national average of home prices. It goes, it, it remains going up for any recession period except for in 2008. Yep. Um, but this again is just another great depiction that if you're hoping that the recession is going to drop home prices significantly for you, it's probably not. Historically, so, it is not outside of the, the occurrence in 2008, the housing bubble. Right, exactly, which was the recession caused directly from- Subprime lending. Very poor lending practices. Yes. I was not in the biz at that time. Um, the good news is that mortgage rates tend to, to drop during recessions, and this is just another indicator showing that we do have better rates on the horizon. So again, you see vertical bars, the recession, we see mortgage rates drop after every single recession period, even 2008. And the idea with that being that we are going to be coming out of this period of time where we're trying to combat inflation by increasing rates and move into a time where we are trying to then stimulate and support the economy during a recession. Once that's uh, once once it's officially stated that we're in a recession. Yep, exactly. Exactly. And when inflation is down, we don't have to pass those high rates onto our consumers because people aren't having so many, so much of their dollars eroded by inflation, right? You can make less on an investment and even be better off because inflation is lower. So those, that cost doesn't have to be passed on to people buying 
whether it be a house or a credit card or whatever it might be. But yeah, and then rates come down and they wanna stimulate the economy again. So these are some prediction for rates um, from Freddie Mac, Fannie Mae, MBA, NRA, which is the Realtor Association. And you can see they're all kind of in the, Fannie is very hopeful. Yeah. I'm not quite as hopeful as Fannie, but I'm more hopeful than the Realtors. Um, I'm kind of thinking like mid fives, uh, you know, sometime this later this year. But I think it's just really great. You know, these are all really credible resources and these are their predictions for for rates coming down so love to see that that's great news yeah and just as a side note i mean i didn't prep you for this but i know that you're a big fan of temporary buy downs and that's another subject that i have spoken about in other videos um which is an opportunity for a home buyer to significantly reduce their mortgage rate uh, effectively with a 2-1 buy down as an example two full percentage points in the first year, one full percentage point in the second year. So if, for example, rates today were six and a half, that would mean in your first year, your mortgage rate would be four and a half. That would mean in your second year, it would be five and a half. And when we're talking about the, the relatively near future of seeing rates come back down into the fives, um, employing something like a temporary buy-down is a great way to combat these currently high interest rates and to kind of weather the storm, for lack of a better way to put it, until rates do come back down, at which point in time people will refinance. Is that, do you agree with all of that? Yes, I majorly agree with that. One, one thing I just want to kind of note there is your interest rate isn't actually lowered for the first two years. It's not like an adjustable rate mortgage. You're just paying a mortgage based on a lower rate. So let's say your mortgage payment is um, $3,000 a month, but you've done this 2-1 temporary buy-down. You're making payments based on a rate of 4.5%, and the rest of your mortgage payment is being subsidized by a um, some money that's sitting in an escrow account that ideally, Jeff, you've negotiated for the seller to pay for for your buyer. So the buyer is actually making their full mortgage payment for those first two years based off their locked in or their note rate. Yeah. And so, so side note on that, and again, encourage you to take a look at some of those other videos that I've done on temporary buy downs, um, if that's something you're considering. But yes, your, your rate doesn't just magically drop 2% yes. in the first year, 1% in the second. There are funds that are supporting that buy down uh, for the duration of that, that period. And so effectively, yes, there's this, you could think of it as like a debit account where there are funds being drawn upon on a monthly basis to basically net out what your payment would be at that full rate. Um, but in a perfect world, we would be getting those funds from the seller of yeah. the home that you are purchasing. So it's uh, a savings to you um, in, in that regard. And I have to say 100% of my clients in the last seven months who have went into negotiating for a house, asking for those have got them. Yeah. That's a fact. And, and maybe they're offering a little bit more in the house to kind of combat that. But I think that if you're interested in buying, yes, rates might come down, but when rates come back down, everyone's going to be home shopping again. Right now you can get the home you want at the price you want maybe a little bit even under ask. You can have your awesome realtor, Jeff, you know, negotiate in a seller credit. So then you can get the rate that you want to. And now let's say, you know, you do lock in a rate of six and a half percent. The first year is four and a half percent. The second year is five and a half percent. You've essentially just bought yourself two years for the inflation and rates to come down. And then you can refinance. And with the refinance, your costs are built into the loans. So you're not paying any money out of pocket to do that. So, I mean, I think right now is an awesome time to buy. I saw something recently that said, it was like the optimum time to buy is in maximum pessimism. I, I totally butchered that, but it's just really beautifully written. I'll send it to you. Um, but I agree with that. Right now is a time where you don't have much competition and you can negotiate a great price and a seller credit to get yourself a great rate too. Yeah, and I, I did not, I did not ask Sarah to say that or prep her again for this, this kind of sidebar conversation that we're having right now. But agree with everything she's saying. Um, you know, buying a home right now puts you in a position that is much more favorable than most buyers experienced over the course of the last two years. Being mm -hmm. in such a competitive market, 
waiving their contingencies, uh, including escalations in their offers that required them to pay 10 some odd plus percent more for the home than they would have based on the list price. Um, and so it's putting people, I've just had in the last week, I've gotten two clients under contract on homes in Sudden Valley that are um, right around $100,000 less than those homes listed for back in September. It's crazy. Um, so it, it's, a, it's a great time to be a buyer if you are methodical about how you're approaching it. Um, and, uh, and especially if we can mitigate rates in the short term with something like that temporary buy down. Yeah, I think that if you're working um, with a great realtor who really knows and understands the market and you're working with a good lender who understands the different products and has the different products to support, you know, um, something that can combat these rates or, you know what, worst case scenario, you don't do the buy down. Sure, your rates, you know, six and a half percent, but maybe you just saved one hundred thousand dollars on a house and you rate six and a half percent for a year or two and then you refinance. Right. So even if you couldn't get the two on temporary buy down, I still just think it's there's so much opportunity in this market for people to really get hold of the homes that they want and doing a home inspection. <laughs> and you already alluded to this, but our I think our collective belief is that when rates do come back down, because much of what drove the housing market in this kind of linear progression very steeply upward over the course of the last couple of years was supply and demand, right? Mm -hmm. There was far more people who wanted homes than there were homes available. That didn't change. That didn't go away. It's just that with rates increasing, people got priced out of the market and or got nervous about mm -hmm. buying a home with rates where they are. So the reasonable expectation is that when rates do come back down, the competition will start to increase once again. And I don't personally think that's going to lead to like an overnight, uh, you know, exponential growth in terms of home uh, list prices. But I do think it's going to put us back in a position where you do have maybe two or three people that are interested in one particular home, starting mm -hmm. the wave contingencies, starting the right escalations, um, and, the, and the market will shift again. So right now, uh, again, just a very favorable market for buyers. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, even just like speaking from experience, I bought a house in uh, July of 2021 and I had lost out on a couple of offers doing like a hundred thousand dollars over, you know, ways waving the inspection. And I knew the listing agents really well. I was like, come on guys. Um, and I ended up buying a house that's, you know, I really like it. It's a great home, but right now I'm seeing so many homes sitting and I'm like, I love those. Like, what if I had just waited? What if I didn't have FOMO about the low rates yeah. and had just, you know, kind of waited it out and I'm glad I didn't, you know, I love my home, but there's just so many beautiful homes sitting that you can a lot get. Of options yeah. right now. A lot yeah. of options, just a little bit higher rate, but you know, it's, as long as you're comfortable with the payment, that's, that's what it's all about at the end of the day. Totally. That's the end of my presentation. Oh no, it's not. <laughs> um, yeah, this is this is just a little bullet. We're just hearing so much about the the housing market at any point. Every single year there's there's bad things going in the market about, you know, it's not a good time to buy. Um, renting is better, home ownership's not building wealth, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. There's always constant chatter in the market. But I think that if we take a look at these graphs, this data, um, you know, actual numbers, inflation, look at things more holistically, we can really see that. The media is always going to say this, but if we back the emotion out of it and look at things more logically and, and, and based off real data, that it almost will always be a good time to buy a house unless you plan on just selling it for a year, you know, selling it in a year or something. Um, but I think that we can really use this data to educate our buyers and combat some of this noise from the media. And that was like two and, and to kind of uh, reemphasize two things that you just said, maybe using other words, like the first is that, you know, um, bad news tends to get more attention than good news. And mm -hmm. so that is a lot of what we see in the media. Yeah. Um, the other being that, you know, the big takeaway that I had from the first time I saw your presentation that I have here going through it a second time is that. There is hope for the future in terms of, you know, where things go from where we are now, as, mm -hmm. uh, you know, moving forward with regards to rates, with inflation, et cetera. And we can base that confidence in things improving on history, right? So we're yeah. not just, we're not just guessing and hoping and wishing and saying nice things. We're actually looking at hard data and looking at things from a historical perspective. And as we know, history has a tendency to repeat itself. So 
um, yeah, just super helpful for, for me. And again, I think this will be helpful for a lot of people in feeling better about the market, um, better about shopping for a home, better about mortgage rates, um, and just realistically what we think things will look like in, in even the coming eight months, 10 months, couple of years. Yeah. I think, I think this next year is going to be a really happy medium between interest rates and buyers and sellers being able to negotiate. And I think just kind of getting back to like housing was never meant to be this overnight one year you have it and you make a bunch of money, which it was for the last two years. Like housing has always been something where you invest in it and you hold on to it. You'll yield a great return. Um, and we kind of got away from that when the rates were so ridiculously low and homes were appreciating so quickly. So I think that was a brief moment in time that we're probably not going to come back to for a long time. But I think what we are leading into is going to be a much fairer market between buyers and sellers with much more stable rates. And I'm personally very excited for that. That's good. That's awesome. Well, I really appreciate you taking the time to go through this again. And uh, I, I, again, I think it's going to be super valuable to anybody who takes the time to watch this. So thank you, Sarah. Yeah. Thanks for having me, Jeff. Have a good Thanksgiving. Thank you. You too. <laughs> Bye. Bye. Thank you.